Here we have another example of the clean transition between the different directions of rock layers. So right here, you can see it uh, goes up at that diagonal angle, and then here it's more horizontal angle. And you can see it is like an organic flowy pattern, but uh, the transition between them is just so clean. <laughs> I, again, it could be, I'm just missing, I don't actually Google everything, so it's my fault, but, you know, I should try to debunk it first. I just like to try and come up with my own explanations. See it over here, too. So, again, it could be completely natural. I just question if it is. Just because it's it's so clean, you don't see any 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 messiness. In this picture, we see what we could call kind of a, a layer cake pattern rock. I'm sure there's a perfectly good geological explanation for this. It's just I I just raised the question if I wonder if it's an artist's signature if that makes sense, or I don't know, just makes me curious if it's 100% natural. Okay, so this I showed you before, it's the, in Utah, these, these ridges protruding out of the rock, kind of streaks of rock going along here. And I, somebody had posted some pictures of it, so I just wanted to show you those. Here's one photo of the, the ridge, what it looks like up close. Here's a little photo album of these streaks or ridges. I guess they're called dikes, so there's that. Uh, this is an old drawing, I guess. Another photo. The photo. There we go. Just so you can see what it looks like. Because you can't always tell from the Google Maps what you're looking at. Then here I wanted to show there's the same thing in Peru. I mean it's a pretty common common pattern. This is right next to Lake Titty Kaka. Here you see the titty. <laughs> looks like a titty, doesn't it? There's the nipple. There's the the breast, the titty of Lake Titicaca, okay, but here's the, the dikes, these stone ridges, and again here we see a, a Brian Forster video of these, um, wherever the devil's doorway is, probably close by to where we were, where we were just looking at. So you see these stone ridges. I don't, it doesn't look like remains of an ancient civilization or tool marks necessarily. Uh, although you see some, some stairs here. There's quite a few stairs. Could be recent additions. Okay, here's an article explaining how they form these dikes. Are they great walls erected by an ancient civilization? Do they point to some secret alien refueling station inside the peaks? Or are they natural? And if so, why are they so tall and thin? Why do they stick up out of the ground? How did they form? As it turns out, the walls are quite fascinating, but not much of a mystery. They are natural, of course, and provide one of the best known examples of interesting geological structures known as dikes. In fact, the Spanish Peaks dikes are often featured in geology textbooks because they so prominently illustrate the concept. To understand how the dikes of the Spanish Peaks formed, we must go back in time. 90 million years ago, the eastern two-thirds of what is now Colorado was covered with a shallow sea. The western third, where land was slightly higher than the sea, consisted of coal swamps and floodplains. Over time, the seas receded as land rose during the birth of the Colorado Rockies. 
the Spanish peaks formed when twin pools of magma, hot liquid rock, began pushing their way up towards the surface. The older overlying rock bent and slowly rose over each pool as the magma pushed upward forming two dome-shaped humps. The magma never quite forced its way through the overlying rock to spew onto the ground forming a volcano. Still, the pressure on the rock was so intense, huge cracks formed beneath the surface that radiated outward from the domes. Much like a rock chip in a windshield may send cracks out in all directions without completely penetrating the windshield. Molten rock squeezed into the cracks and then began to cool and harden. Over time, the slow but powerful force of erosion began carving away on first the older overlying rock and eventually the newly exposed hardened magma. But the hardened magma was, and still is, stronger than the softer surrounding rock. It has eroded at a slower rate and now stands above the rock which once hit it. More than just geologic oddities, the dikes are a reminder of another world, one separated from us by the distance of time. Okay, and I'm reading you this because uh, it makes sense. Um, I just don't want to be throwing stuff out there that's... I'm like, oh, is it this crazy theory? But it's just natural, so I just want to possibly correct myself and then also acknowledge... I mean, I'm just asking questions. I'm not really asserting anything. Just raising questions. I, I would just point out, like, the, the clues, the clues in the rock may, and the surrounding environment may point to something like twin pools of magma or something. They may, uh, they may point to uh, a shallow sea and coal swamps and floodplains. But let's just acknowledge that we weren't there. We don't know that there were twin pools of magma. Maybe there were three pools. Maybe there was one. Maybe there was none. <laughs> I mean, 90 million years ago, that's a, that's a long time to, to extrapolate and just assume that it's a fact, that you know that this is how it formed. And my best guess is, yeah, I mean, it looks natural. So... Just assume that, like... 50 to 90 percent of the stuff I'm showing you is either natural or modern activity and then in some cases it might not be so that's why I'm just showing miscellaneous examples of curious things. Let's move on. Okay I really like this one. This is a another Brian Forster video. This is on the the Nazca lines and I just like this image because it's like the perfect spirit of uh the tooling of Earth, because it's like somebody somebody let their little nine-year-old nephew take the controls for a few minutes and draw draw some uh, draw some little uh, pictures on the sand, like in some advanced machinery or control room or something they just let, let some little kid draw random pictures that's what I mean obviously that's just uh, a fun little theory but I'm just saying it, it looks like that goofy little cartoon figures silly lines <laughs> like, that's not it's a, it's a goofy, very goofy, very goofy thing. I don't think that was done by native cultures. And these patchy lines could be these wilderness corridors. No, I don't think so. I mean, because I've been there for so long. But you see, you see the extent of it, just these patchy lines. And that's it's not unique to Nazca as well. And you see tire tracks from modern stuff as well. I just wanted to show you that cartoon, cartoonish aesthetic it just kind of makes you scrunch your nose or say, huh? Okay, here's another Brian Forster video about uh, Petra in Jordan. 
he took a tour of the site and I just wanted to show you a couple couple highlights here's one um, see the tool marks on the side uh, there's various types of tool marks you see like these big ones you see very fine ones you see just whatever and then these like melted they mentioned these like it looks like it was melted melted ice cream at the bottom here with a hot tool tip or something like that see it better there yeah I see that okay and then I just wanted to show you a couple different things okay so there's these tool marks on the side patches of kind of fine tool marks just worth noting okay here you see more coarse ones very regularly spaced and vertical and this isn't even on the uh, the main structures this is just on the surrounding rock and I'll give you my theory on it in a second miscellaneous tool marks more tool marks here patchy and I'm gonna throw this crazy idea out there but what if uh, what if it was Petra, the whole side of Petra, which is like miles long of all this, just mile, mile after mile of <clears throat> the same type of pattern and, and goofy stuff. Um, tool marks, blah, blah, blah. And these rectangle windows. I mean, what's the purpose of that? It's not even, it doesn't even, it's just a, a carved out rectangle. There you go. Um, so I'm saying, what if, uh, what if Petra was brought into being all at once uh, in a very short period of time? Like it was just printed with uh, the tool marks already in place or little ridges to look like tool marks to uh, throw us off the path or to, to confuse us. So like they just used some advanced tech they who I don't know of course I don't know they used the advanced tech to bring this structure into being and in, like over the course of only a few seconds or a few minutes or a few hours or whatever and uh, it was pre-programmed with these this algorithm of of miscellaneous features such uh, including the tool marks, the random rectangles with random holes, and maybe even the the geological layers. So was it uh, the site of Petra was imposed on existing rock, or was it uh, was the rock brought into being at the same time as well, like a big blob of putty that they molded or or just pulled out of the ether? Just a thought, and then. Here I just wanted to point out this right here. It's like almost looks like footprints up the side, not really, but like little uh, just miscellaneous rectangles. And again, that's what I'm saying could be part of this this WTF protocol that just serves to make you scratch your head. Putting this here would would make us run in circles basically and trying to figure out what it was okay and here you see an area of Petra that's highly eroded and Brian is pointing that out as well uh, so that is a possible testament to the age of the site see pretty considerable eroding and contrast that with the treasury, which is the main attraction of Petra. It's this thing, and uh, it's pretty sharp when you see pieces broken off, but uh, he thinks it may have been cleaned up and, and refined and finer details added later by like the Greeks or something, uh, which is very possible. I'm also saying that uh, it's possible that they Again, I, I hate to invoke the ominous they, but whoever, you know, whoever. It's possible that 
whoever created this made some parts of it pre-eroded, if that makes sense. So, like, all this erosion here, what if, what if that's strategic? You know what I mean? What if it's brought into being already eroded? Eroded looking. If that makes sense. Here I just want to point out all the, the miscellaneous goofy features. You've got these random rooms on the side of the rock. No real rhyme or reason to it. Seems to follow the terrain of the rock, kind of. But then they're using these, they're cutting these really precise structures in some cases out of the rock. And again, some people think it's like wood structures or like a normal building that was later petrified in some sort of advanced process. Here you've got like a quarter of an amphitheater just uh, with, again, random, <laughs> random holes. Here Brian is pointing out the perfect, perfectly spaced uh, ridges. It's like these perfectly parallel lines of, of tool marks on the wall of the this interior, this large interior chamber here. And uh, he's, he's saying that no way was that done by hand or that it's a very low probability. Who knows? I mean, people are, um, people can impress you with their engineering and artistic abilities. Um, I'm just saying I, I kind of doubt it in this, in this case, that it was done by hand or chisel or whatever. And then of course, okay, so was it machined with some kind of advanced tool um, or, you know, some kind of modern, uh, I don't know, saw or whatever, that's possible. I just wanted to mention the possible scale completeness of this project. And by scale complete, I mean you have these very fine tool marks and then you also have very large scale, like entire coasts and uh, areas of earth either manufactured or or edited somehow so you've got these there's small scale capability as well as large scale capability if this was done by the same party that did some of the other stuff that we've seen so far. Here I wanted to point out the, you have these horizontal layers of rock or whatever, and then uh, these horizontal streaks, and then the dimpled uh, rock. I just wanted to point that out because it resembles these uh, circular dimples inside of these kind of streaky lines. It resembles these lines at Ayers Rock in Australia, which many people have commented on uh, kind of how out of place it seems. The rock is just a big lone rock muffin in the middle of the desert, middle of the landscape. And it's got these, these dimpled kind of ridges or uh, streaky rock layers. Just pointing out the, uh, again, could be completely natural geological or weathering process. Just uh, dimpled, very straight parallel lines. Could be anything, not sure. And then here, I just wanted to throw out the idea that maybe these two different styles of stairs are uh, complementary and done at the same time. Meaning you have this side made to look machined with a 
tool marks or actually machined. And then this side over here, which is repairs or later addition. Just throwing this out there that maybe it's a part of the same, done by the same hand. So maybe someone wanted to give the illusion of multiple different parties active in the area and then they did two different styles. But I would say it's probably more likely that modern humans in the last 100 or 200 years fixed this up. It's just I just wanted to inject my little what if there. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show on this video was uh, right here, to, off to the right side, how these uh, these geological uh, patterns, the layers, the, the striations in the rock, how they change, change direction right here. And that's not necessarily suspicious or anything. Just pointing it out. See the... Changing directions of the rock layer right there, and again looks pretty organic. So I don't, I can't really, can't really throw accusations around because I don't really know what I'm talking about. But uh, I just wanted to point out that it resembles this area of the Cyprus coast in Cyprus. where you have these, this is obviously a much larger scale, but you have these streaks of rock changing directions kind of abruptly. I'm not sure how that occurs or what caused this. Again, could be probably just a completely natural geological process. I'm just noting the similarity across scale. I mean, which is a property of nature, so. Could it have been brush strokes, more or less, of like rock, like rock, wet rock that was used as raw material to shape the landscape? And then this is like a signature move, or one of the revealing traits of how it operated, how it, uh, what it did, could be just a thought in my head. Here in this video, I just I wanted to point out the possibility of uh, what some people talk about uh, petrification. Like, was it a, a wood structure that was later turned to stone, or parts of it were? wood and whatever, and then it's turned to stone later. I mean, however it was built, it's very impressive, and I would say beyond the conventional explanations of how history went down. Angkor Wat, this is Angkor Wat, and you just have all these very old-looking, kind of fractal patterns here. I just wanted to show you some some posts that from this uh, one Facebook group. Here we have uh, someone was calling this the hot butter knife effect. Uh, this is this is the the image I wanted to show. It's like somebody cut a loaf of rock with a butter knife. See what I mean? Some bullshit underwater. Not sure where this is. But this, these strange, strange rocks are everywhere. I mean, I think this is Russia somewhere. Just a random pyramid looking thing. Are these, are these tool marks or 
you know, these, these gaps, are they part of some rock forming process or did somebody cut through here? Let's show this one more time. Pretty crazy. This is a guy just was driving somewhere, Alabama or Georgia or something in the United States. This one is somewhere in Micronesia and pointing out here the odd nature of these stacks of, looks like, almost looks like they were logs, like a stack of logs that got petrified. But I'm, I don't think that's likely because they're kind of angular and trees, unless they were cut like that, that's possible. So they, this was like a bunch of lumber and then it got turned to rock. Eh, I don't know about that, but what else was it? I mean, oh, <laughs> how is there just a stack of all these, uh, almost looks like columnar basalt or you know, who did this? And obviously it looks like it was done a long time ago. And how did they do it? Tough to say. This one's really cool. This is somewhere in Egypt. What I wanted to point out is uh, something other people have pointed out as well. It's like plaster, like the, the hieroglyphs and the Egyptian artwork is, looks like a clumsy slap on or, or as if, you know, if this was all one project done by the same people, like this is, uh, this is like, it's like this high technology to do all this stuff to create this out of the rock, which is either a lot of effort or high technology. And then combined with this, cheese dick aesthetic of, you know, like paper mache rock on the outside or like some kind of plaster. And then these silly, um, it's not very sophisticated artwork or language style, but they contrast that with the sophisticated methods that they use to create this. So it's, it's like, a, you've seen that meme with the, the penguin with his front, his f top half of his body going one way and the bottom half of his body going the other way, facing the other way. So <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a culture that doesn't add up. It's not self-consistent. It's got these advanced machining methods and then these this kind of silly artwork style that, uh, and then, which is peeling away. So it was never very, see it peeling away here. So I'm not sure what to make of that. The great temple of Ramses the second in upper Egypt. You see these statues and the exterior, the stylized part is peeling off. So that doesn't necessarily indicate tomfoolery. Uh, that may have just been the original construction method. I think I just wanted to point out here the, uh, just how goofy hieroglyphs are in general and how you have such a, a muddle, a contrast of, of styles. You have the advanced, advanced knowledge it took the, to build this building combined with the almost primitive god worship and, and the silly hieroglyph stuff. This is the court of Ramses II in Luxor. Again, you see the, the hieroglyphs peeling off the walls. So was it an original structure that had nothing to do with this this culture who, who did this stuff? 
and then whoever did this came and plastered it on the outside to make it look to repurpose the site and make it something else that's one possibility another possibility is it's just the original construction method just for whatever reason used plaster and it's not as durable as the whatever the, the rest of the columns are made of and then just pointing out again the contrast between the, the high technology the high construction technology and then the disheveled state of mind that produced these images. See the, the lion head lady? Why? Are they depicting someone who's actually had a, a lion head? Or are they just very imaginative and creative and they like to create big 80 foot tall stone buildings with or concrete buildings with lion headed ladies? Or is it put here to mess with us? Here's one more. This is the Temple of Isis. Again, the, uh, the the shell of the columns is peeling away. Here you see See, this is almost kind of deceptive looking. Is it, these are actual large blocks or is it like casings, very shallow casings made to look like large blocks, which are now breaking away? That's tough to say. Hmm. Guess you'd have to be up close and with these goofy cartoon drawings on the wall. Bird, bishop hat, claw, claw marks or tool marks, whatever. Looks, I don't know what that is. This article, I just wanted to focus on this one image. In the sacred valley of Peru. So here we have either a broken structure which was had more of this type of uh, pattern and that all broke away what would it have looked like to begin with and what was its purpose you have these uh these stone knobs <laughs> rectangles it's kind of artistic but it's not that artistic like you can you can make these advanced cuts in in stone and then you it just it's a little silly looking. So again, th the theory is that this was cut like this to, to look silly. And that's similar to this, uh, another Brian Forrester video. I just took this screenshot of this, this one feature, because it's like, it's a boulder with this thing cut out of it. And what the heck is that? <laughs> what purpose does that serve? So, let's just take a look here. What does this look like? So you've got this boulder here. Was it part of a larger structure originally? Or were they quarrying something? And uh, so I'm focusing on this feature here, wondering were they quarrying something and got interrupted, or what? What is this? <laughs> What's its purpose? And why is it just this? And then the rest of the rock is like a normal rock. So again, the idea is. Perhaps it is part of a confusion strategy. It's very precise. Maybe it was done by hand. I kind of doubt it. Just see more of it there. It's like a, a pseudo 
pseudo architectural component like it's 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 not anything <laughs> okay let me just show you these images one more time this is in uh, the Philippines another island another island see all that crisscrossing I just think that's one of the stranger examples so I just wanted to show it again weird 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 okay this is from a Brian Forrester video I uh, wanted to point out here this grid pattern so are these farms modern farms only or were they um, kind of some kind of old pattern that uh, was repurposed for farming it's tough to say whether that's like land or, or they're filled in with water but uh, there's another angle this is just a, a real photo of what we see all over the world the, the grid pattern and um, I'll show you uh, I'll show you an example in maps real quick. So here's a good example of something very similar to what we just saw in those photos. And it's over such a vast area in some places. So the question is whether patterns like this are uh, are an old feature. See, it's kind of decaying right here, or uh, in disrepair, fading, eroding, and w just wondering whether these have been repurposed in modern times and already looked like this. That's possible. See, see here, you see it see that type of pattern kind of eroding away like low walls or, or ditch it, ditches or something and you can just kind of see it's overgrown and not really used although that could just be the time of year or the season but I don't think so I think it's old eroding patterns that are no longer used or were something else and now they're used for modern stuff okay in this photo I just wanted to point out I think this is Angels Landing in Zion National Park and I just wanted to point out the right angles in the stone although sometimes stone breaks in a very angular way so this could be natural or it could be you know, like the rock cut patterns. Peru, Brian Forrester, little stone walls like you see all over the world, the, wor the world. Grand Canyon, this one was disappointing. I was hoping to see like lots of cool tool marks and evidence of high strangeness, but I don't see a whole lot. It just looks like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> And it's all HD too, so I lose. I still think it could have been like CNC'd and material dumped elsewhere. I don't know. Okay, here's a Brian Forrester video. He has good drone videos of various sites. So he's got this site. And he himself remarks that a lot of these like angular cuts out of these this rock. It looks random, like it doesn't look like it was part of something. Like here's a couple stairs and a random rectangular, multiple rectangles tooled out. And it's not clear why. And I think a lot of these, even the walls themselves were just like, like, hey, let's build a wall and then not have it be a part of a larger structure. <laughs> This is a wall and then some dirt. Makes sense to me.
or you know the the wall was there and then the rest of the structure was perishable and then it perished and the wall only the wall remains that's possible i think that's the general hypothesis anyways okay this is kind of a maybe a silly idea but lake havasu in arizona or on the california arizona border uh, the london bridge so the story is um this dude bought the london bridge from london england and he just wanted to slap it in the middle of the desert just for the hell of it so he did and he shipped it over and he put it right here and he built a canal right there to put it over because he didn't really have a place to put the bridge over like an a to b so he built a canal across here and put the bridge right there so let's look at some pictures there's the bridge being constructed it was taken apart in london and then shipped over and then reassembled in Lake Havasu, and you could see all the all the dirt they had to remove. And uh, my theory here, it's a crazy idea, but I'm just throwing out the idea that maybe the bridge was already there, like buried in, in the, uh, or a bridge was already there, buried in the, the sand or the dirt, and then they uncovered it and then put the exterior of the London Bridge onto it. I don't really have a, a good reason for suspecting that, just some circumstantial evidence. And this is the bridge in London a long time ago before it was removed. Um, my mom, he was a genius. Let's see, right there is where it is. So it was like Lake Havasu City started as like a, a military, emergency military base. In the 30s for like World War II training or whatever and then later they developed it into a city for people uh, what am I looking for here I don't know just taking you through it hello see all the dirt underneath and the, the granite blocks but in the construction photos you only see it already completed with the only the exterior incomplete and then here we see Alan Sainz, who was 17 when he got his first job taking down the bridge in London. As you can see, he's very happy. He's going to buy some bubblegum. Here's a good, good picture. Okay, so this is the bridge in Arizona, I believe. You can see the railing is not complete. All right, well, like I said, it's kind of a silly theory. I would be surprised if it's true. But given some of the mud flood stuff, it just crossed my mind that maybe uh, it was buried a long time ago and then unburied and then turned into the London Bridge. Nice little image there. But you see it's already complete. It's just the exterior that's not. The casings. So was there already a bridge there that somehow magically matched the proportions of the other bridge? And they decided to slap a new exterior on it? Possible, not. I don't know. And here's the canal after the canal was built. So they had to move a considerable amount of dirt out. So the bridge, the idea is the bridge was already here. And then bridge from what to what? I don't know. And where's the rest of the town? I don't know. If it was indeed part of something prior. But my thinking is there's the construction site, all the granite blocks. My thinking, because there's uh, a Masonic Lodge nearby, although there's one of those. Here's the bridge. There's one of those everywhere. But Fraternal Order of the Eagles. I just thought that was a little weird. Let's take a look at the front of the building. Whatever that is. Okay, probably just old dudes playing bingo. Another weird thing was Knights of Columbus. Yeah, here we go. You got the Fraternal Eagle Warrior over here. 
And then over here is the Knights of Columbus. Let's take a look. I don't know what they do. Some type of esoteric shizzle. I just wonder if they have something to do with it. And this dude had a similar idea that the Panama and Suez Canal were already built. He goes through these maps and uh, I didn't actually watch the whole video, but uh, he shows that these the Panama and Suez Canal were there prior to their alleged construction there on the map. So they were already built and then we found them and repurposed them. So that's what may have happened with Lake Havasu Bridge, London Bridge. Let's go through some images. Okay, so in, in uh, there's Xanadu Hotel, Xanadu Condo Resort, in which Xanadu is associated with Scientology. That's like their alien god or something. Bridge in Yosemite National Park, California. This is a modern one, and this is one of the earlier ones. And I'm uh, supposing that this is a relic from an earlier era. Uh, here we see like the gr grid pattern or the low stone walls on the, in the background. This is the Bohol Island, wherever Bohol is. So Bohol is an island, and it's got these things called the Chocolate Hills. And that does not look like the hills occurred from plate tectonics. To me, it just looks like they were dumped there. Dumped. A bunch of dirt piles were dumped on the island or something like that. Strange-ish. This almost doesn't count because it looks like these people might be in front of a dam rather than a, a cliff. But you see these very regular horizontal and vertical lines. Vertical could just be water erosion. Horizontal could just be geological layers. Or it could be like a fake layer cake thing. Um, this, I just wanted to point out how plastery it looks. And like this thin seam and the crisscrossy nature of it. it. Looks like a, almost like cast and then styled. This is a crocodile, so it's like a ancient art piece, and there's different versions of it. I couldn't find the one I was looking for, but it's like a crocodile with a saw in its mouth. And I'm wondering if that depicts these, it's an attempt to depict these old machines that did the tooling of Earth. Dun, dun, dun. Sand taking over roads. I just wanted to mention this because these obviously weather conditions can overtake an area pretty quick and change the look of it, which surprises me because, or I mean, which makes me question the, the age of, uh, of like the streaks. Because if they're really that old, then I would think they would have eroded away, kind of. Though they are pretty big and they have, they have eroded away somewhat, quite a bit. But I, I don't know if it would last longer than a few seasons. I feel like it would just, um, maybe my intuition's not that good. But I was just thinking maybe it's, since they're so clear in some places, maybe it was a little more recent, a couple thousand years ago, or a couple hundred, or a couple tens of thousand, I don't know. So this was a YouTube video, a countdown of like strange things on Google Earth. They mentioned this one, I'm not sure where it was, but they said it's like a... An airport built in the, somewhere in America and it's never been used. No one's ever taken off or landed there. So I guess the idea here would be that maybe there is some pattern or, or patchy land here that was already there. And then they built an airport over it to cover it up. They, whoever they is. The Knights of the Golden Butt Plug. This video... All I really wanted to show is this very smooth line here. 
like a clean, very clean sever, clean, clean gap, clean cut. Let's see it there. Kind of, could be. Clean shear. 